Hello, Internet. James Allen from Out of Eight. And today I'm playing real time strategy game Grey Goo. Uh, beyond the generally terrible name of the game, I'm also having performance issues. As you may be able to tell, the main menu for me uh, and a couple others based off of feedback on the official forums runs at like 10 frames per second. But then when I go into a game, it runs normally, uh, about 50 frames per second for me, uh, which is really weird. Uh, so I don't really know what the deal is there. It may be something that the developers may be patching, hopefully, in the near future. But it is something that uh, goes for the game as of its current state. Uh, the single-player campaign consists of 15 missions. Uh, offers a lot of typical lots of enemies you have to go after or you have to defend against superior enemy numbers. Unlocks in a linear order. There is some variation in objectives, but generally there's nothing too innovative there. There's also skirmish and online play. If you go into multiplayer, you can uh, browse the different Steam matches and also over the LAN, which is nice, um, or play single player, the skirmish against the AI. The limitation there is is that there's only maps for two and four players, so you can only play one on one or two on two, which is pretty limiting. And also, you can see there's only uh, eight maps to choose from, which is also a very uh, small amount. Uh, you can create your own custom maps using the editor but again there isn't really that much content here and you know you end up generally playing the same maps over and over again one thing that the game does have going for it are very, three very distinctive factions that play very differently between them uh, the two more traditional ones I'm gonna show off first uh, in a four-on-four -four match but I'm not gonna play the whole match I'm just gonna do it to show off the uh, races that are in the game and then I'll actually play a match as the more unique uh, race that's in the game uh, so the more traditional one is the beta, uh, and that's who I'm going to start out as. I'm also going to put an AI on human, which is actually my least favorite faction. And then I'm also going to do uh, kind of the enemy as goo. But again, I'm not going to play for that long on this one. Then I'll do a full game uh, as the goo. So we'll launch here and uh, see what we get. All right, here we go. So uh, the way the game works, at least for the uh, first race here, the beta, is that they attach modules to their headquarters, and then you can also place hubs that you can attach either two or four or six things to, depending on whether they're medium, large, or small. When you start out, you have just enough resources for a refinery. Every race mines the same stuff. Uh, and they kind of use it the same way which is fine there's only one resource in the game uh, the interface as you can tell is actually pretty decent um, it gives you population cap there's a cap of hard cap of 200 for everybody uh, it shows you the amount of resources you have and also your resource rate so you can see whether you need uh, more resources or not so I'm gonna start doing factory here you can also see there is an infinite queue which is very handy oh. There's an enemy guy, just kind of taking pot shots at me. Uh, the way that the uh, beta work is that you basically go out and you can highlight these resource locations, like right over here. Um, you go out and you build hubs around resources and then also build hubs and then attach uh, factories and, all, and large factories and attachments to them. And that's basically how it works. You also get defensive walls. Uh, 
the interface is larger than a lot of other real-time strategy games. I actually kind of like it. Uh, it gives you pretty easy access to uh, your units, different structures, and stuff like that. Uh, and it makes it pretty easy to find out what you're doing. He's trying to take the goo out. So I'm actually going to bring these guys over here because I need that resource location as soon as I get enough resources for it. Uh, my general strategy is to save up uh, for a second refinery on a hub. So when I get kind of near that level of resources, I need 900 to get both up. Uh, then I build a small hub over here, uh, which I will actually do right now. Simply just to collect resources at the second spot. So that takes about 30 seconds to get up, and then I'll put the refinery when I can afford it. Unit ready. Unit uh, as for the humans, the humans actually have to connect all of their things. They can lay little pipes uh, out, but everything has to be connected to their main core, uh, which really hinders their expansion. This is the more defensive people. They do get turrets uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but they're definitely more defensive than the uh, than the beta are. All right, and I am actually good to go for my refinery. Zero. Oh, well, these guys are in the way. There we go. Ten. That's what I want. All right, so I should be just about good on this. Yep, forty to spare. Good job. All right. My next thing is actually, I'll probably go up here. Uh, the one thing the interface does not have is a select all over the entire map button. It does have a select all at the current screen. So I can select all the units and send them up here. I would like to build a large, or actually probably a medium hub, because I have to build a medium first before I get a large. A medium hub up here, claim these two things, and then get some units going up here. So that's going to be my next goal. Uh, once I get enough resources for it, so I'm actually going to place my medium right now. So let me set my rally points. And then this will be kind of my main base of operations for them. And then the way you get uh, units unlocked with the beta is you just attach these attachments to a factory. And then that allows the factory to build those units. So you can see here you need a tank, here a stealth, air, artillery. You need two for that unit and, and so on. Uh, and then there's also tech upgrades you can spend resources on when you get further in the game and don't really need to, uh, um, you know, spend the resources on that. Uh, the units are somewhat intelligent. They will auto-attack units, but when they really get distracted by walls. Um, yep, and this guy needs to go up. Um, they really get distracted by walls. Uh, and will prioritize attacking walls over attacking enemy units, which is kind of crazy. He's just going to keep shooting at those guys. Yeah, so there goes that refinery, and I will actually, what do I want to build here? I need to get any tech to get the, to get the large factory. It lets you do three units at a time, which would be really handy. And I need, yeah, I need attachments first. All right, so let's do a tank. And what units do I want? Out of my way, Steam notification. Uh, let's do tank and artillery. That's usually a good combination. Unit ready. Unit in production. Beginning construction. New direction order. Check. Will assist. All right, so I can get one of these. So I'll do that, and that'll allow me to build my large factory. Alright, so in a minute, this will be ready to pump out a ton of units. 
Now you can see over here there's their little conduits that will allow them to build more stuff further out. Like I said, they're really hindered by uh, having everything tied to the core. This is probably my least favorite faction are the humans. Um, yeah, attack that thing. So I'll show this large factory thing and then I'll actually play uh, a game as the goo. Hey, buddy. Take about half the units to go after here. Uh, another interesting thing are, are these forests here. You can actually hide units in there, which is actually probably something I should do. And unless you're in the forest, you can't tell that they're there. So you can see that they're camouflaged by the green there. So pretty interesting way of doing stealth. All right, so that large factory is ready to go. So you can see all these units that I have, and then let me auto build everything. Up, and here comes everybody. So there you go. So there is attack move, but like I said, units will get distracted by uh, walls. No, nope. everybody, go get them. So there you go. So this will be pumping out units for a long time. So th this side would be pretty set. Uh, and that's basically uh, it for these guys. You can do hangars that will allow you to have uh, uh, aircraft. You need to build a hangar for each aircraft. Uh, but that's basically it for that. So I'm going to actually switch. Uh, and play as the goo. So let me switch the other, or one of the other four players' maps. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, so I will pick the goo. Uh, and actually, I think I'm going to do two on two, actually, is what I'll do. Yeah, let's do this one. That's interesting. So we'll do goo against random, uh, and then show off what these guys can do. Alright, so here's the goo. Uh, they are weird. <clears throat> Let me see what I'm up against. I think the other guy is over here. Uh, much like the other races, they sit on resource locations in order to grow. But what they do is they actually spawn uh, new things from their, uh, from their mothers. So this can do... Uh, small protean, which basically does units. It can do a large protean, which does bigger units. It can actually do another mother goo. It can research tech upgrades, or it can do uh, kind of a defensive thing. Uh, so it's really kind of a really interesting way of doing it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, mother goos going and kind of send them out to all the resource locations. These, if the beta was uh, expansions, these guys are super mobile. So all you have to do is move these guys around. They don't have a base to worry about. Let me see what I ended up getting here. Where is this other guy? Uh, he must be goo as well. If I had to guess. Yeah, that's exactly it. All right, so I'm going to wait to uh, get two here to get another mother going. <clears throat> goo on goo action. Uh, 
the reason why I'm playing on normal AI is because the hard AI gets a significant resource bonus, which is why it's hard. Uh, and I don't like playing that sort of style. It seems kind of unfair. Uh, I played a couple games against hard AI and basically monitored the way that they were able to produce their units. And they just get a bunch of resources at the beginning, which allows them to get really far ahead of... Um, the human player. All right, so I'm going to move this person out. Pretty predictable where I'm going, but that's okay. Again, uh, one thing I like about the game is that uh, even with the goo, you have an option about how you want to expand. You know, do you want to do mothers first and capture more resources or do you want to go for units and rush and it's kind of the same way with the other races you know a lot of people do double factories in the beginning so they can pump out more units rather than going for another resource location so there's lots of different ways of doing things I'm gonna do a small here and I'm gonna give them these yeah, and he took them out so here's these guys I'm going to kind of put them up here for scouting. So, and then I'm basically just kind of wait. Uh, until these things can get more mothers and I'll send the mothers out. Oh, hey. No, oh, attack him. If they're not told to attack move, they'll just ignore enemies that they encounter. Which is pretty crazy. The mother can attack that thing too and absorb it for resources. Now you see the AI is not very smart about sending units out. So oh, there you go, there's another mother. I'm gonna send you actually down here. I'm going to send you to this, actually this one. And I think that'll be pretty good for now. And I'm going to start concentrating on getting some units out. Okay. You see, the AI brings, like, single units over. Uh, in the beginning, at least. It will concentrate a lot of its forces eventually. Right, let's do this. You guys are good. Control group those guys. Uh, don't need anti air because he's goo as well, so we'll do armor. Oh, hey guys. Alright, I'll probably save up for a large, which is three. In a little bit. And you can see, you can really start pumping out the units once these things, you know, your initial economy set up. there almost I would like to do one more mother like over here a little bit closer right, let's do the large what do I want no 
Probably the tank. Yeah, maybe artillery. Let's do artillery. Hey guys. I have more units than you. Let's do a mother. Send you here. I think I'm going to start doing some large. Where? Oh, outside of my sight range. One thing that the aliens can do that's really annoying is go over mountains and stuff. Go attack them. Alright, let's get a mother up. Oh, did I move this person? No, oh, no, he's going. Alright, let's start getting these units up. Now things start getting pretty crazy with uh, the pacing. Oh, I don't know what I just did. Hey guys. Oh, that's what I did. Oh, you go back. Misclick. Alright, anybody got three yet? Not yet? I'm pretty happy with my uh, economy setup. I'm going to start scouting around for places that their goos are at and start attacking them. So I'm just waiting for three so I can get more artillery and tanks and stuff. There's a three. Yeah, attack them. I have no idea. Oh, anyway. And sometimes units are not very intelligent about attacking enemies that are attacking them. They must they must have something up here. Cause they got tons of units coming this way. Alright, let's get some more units up. Hardest part is finding where these units are. Oh, there you go. There's one of them. Again, attack those things. Alright, we're in good shape, I think. Got tons of units like all over the map. They must have another mother up there. Because they still got units coming that way. I got a lot of guys though. This is when a. Uh, Yep, I knew it. This is when a select all units would be extremely helpful. Where else do I have units?
Yeah, there he is. Go get him. Let me do some more tech upgrades here. Uh, I don't do enough tech upgrades. Yeah, there goes that one. All right, well, that's good. Uh, so I don't really know what I want to do. Nothing. <laughs> Just more units. All right. So the problem with these guys is you got to find where all the goos are in order to eliminate them from the game. Look, there's a bunch more guys. Amazing. Stinks, stinks, stinks. Right, there's these. Select everybody. So where are you guys at, huh? Not there. Not there. Not there. Are you up here? This is the annoying part. Just trying to find where these stinking guys are. Did it leave again? Yep. It's so annoying. See, and it's just gonna hide in these mountains. So, so annoying. Anyway. Oh, look, there it is. Yay, there you go. So that, that was the one guy who was just hiding in the mountains where I couldn't get him. There you go, that is Grey Goo. Um, the factions are interesting. I like the distinctive nature that they've used between the two, or, or the three, actually. Uh, the beta are really good at expanding beyond their main base with the hubs. The humans are better at defense because they have to concentrate all their stuff at their huge main base. And the goo are really mobile. So they're very distinctive differences, and I think that's the best part of the game. Uh, the game campaign isn't very interesting. It has a lot of uh, linear missions where it's you against a bunch of other enemies that you got to de defeat over the course of the map. Only has a few maps to play skirmish or online play with that are limited to only two or four players. does have a map editor, so hopefully that number will expand in the future. I like the interface. The only things it needs is uh, select all units across the screen or select just military units uh, like they have in other real-time strategy games. Um, I like how it allows you to uh, auto-queue things so uh, you don't have to worry about you know, re-upping things uh, as you go along and the game gets more intense. Uh, it has pretty simple resource collection, which I actually kind of like because it streamlines the gameplay. It's not very much on micromanagement. It's more tactics and how you want to build, whether you want to go for more of a military focus initially or boom your economy or whatever you want to do with that. 
Uh, and it gives you a lot of options uh, with all the races about how you want to uh, play. A good number of units between infantry, tanks, artillery, flying units, uh, defensive structures. The AI is not great. As you can see on here on normal, I defeat them fairly easily. On hard, they get a uh, resource bonus to kind of counteract that. So the real appeal of the game for me would be online play against other people. Uh, and the game definitely does have some innovative features, but it's brought back from some problems with attack moving, putting too much emphasis on walls, the limited uh, appeal of the campaign, the limited number of maps and stuff like that. Uh, but it does definitely have some good features. So that's all I have for today. Until next time, bye now.